Here are six charts to help you decide if there is a U.S. housing bubble right now. Chart number one. Between 1890 and 1990, a period of 100 years, price appreciation on U.S. homes and inflation-adjusted, real terms was practically zero. In other words, if you had bought your dream home in 1890 and then waited 100 years, witnessing an unprecedented rise in the U.S. economy and its transformation from a regional power to world superpower at the end of those 100 years of impressive economic growth, your profit in real, inflation-adjusted dollars on that house would have been basically zero. To be more specific, after 100 years, the real home price index rose from 100 to 121.49, which translates into a compound annual growth rate of 0.2%. Where does this data come from? It comes from Professor Robert Schiller. Professor Schiller won a Nobel Prize in Economics. He's also the Schiller in the Case-Schiller U.S. National Home Price Index. I ask that you notice something about this chart. There is an established mean near a compound annual growth rate of zero and a relatively tight variance around said mean. This tight variance will be useful to recall later in this video. But this data is just for the U.S. Maybe other countries are different. And maybe 100 years is not long enough to establish a pattern. What about several hundred years of pricing data? This next chart shows housing price data for Amsterdam over four centuries. What was the price appreciation on housing shown in this data in real inflation-adjusted terms between 1628 and 1974? 0 0.45 percent. So let's go back to chart number one. We left off in 1990. What do you think happened to U.S. home price data since 1990? In real inflation-adjusted terms, do you think it was flat? Rose by 10 percent? Rose by 30 percent? Between 1990 and 2023, the index rose from 121 to 209. Remember that mean and variance we discussed earlier? It looks like U.S. home prices have jumped the trend and blown past the established variance around said mean by quite a significant margin. And also, please note, for context, this is actually not the first time the home price index has blown past the established variance since 1990. The previous peak broke the 190 mark and was associated with the 2008 financial crisis. But does any of this actually signal something to be concerned about? In order to answer this question, we must determine two things. First, what historically were the forces which tied housing prices to a 0% real price appreciation? And second, has something fundamental changed about the nature of housing since 1990? Historically, homes did not appreciate much in real terms for at least a couple reasons. First, there was a hard ceiling on home prices caused by its relationship to household income. The value of any good is defined as the net present value or NPV of its future cash flows. In the case of housing, the price of housing is equal to the NPV of the percent of household income associated with housing times household income. Let's look at this equation and see what has the capacity to change dramatically over time. If the equation does not change, we cannot generate sustainable increases in price. Percent of household income devoted to housing historically has remained constant over time, and by constant, we mean the maximum percent possible. Why the maximum possible? Housing represents a combination of various intractable life necessities, such as safety from crime, basic shelter, and social status. Households typically spend between 33% to 50% of their incomes on housing, with lower-income households paying a higher percent of income. Next, let's look at household income itself. One constant in life and economics is household income tends not to change very dramatically over time. Since household income growth tends to be anemic, the growth of 33% of household income also tends to be anemic. Hence, the NPV of 33% of household income cannot be expected to produce dramatic increases in value over time, akin to price appreciation you might see for speculative assets like gold or fine art. This may be part of the reason why houses don't seem to appreciate much in real terms throughout the centuries. The NPV equation never really changes much. The second reason why housing prices tend not to budge from zero has to do with the sheer size of the housing market. If you were to add up all investable assets like stocks, bonds, government debt, 
gold, fine art, housing, etc.? What percent of the total investable market do you think is accounted for by residential housing? 5%? 10%? 20%? Historically, residential real estate has represented the largest asset class by far. For example, going back to 1984, residential real estate made up 39% of total investable assets. It was the largest single asset class by far. The second largest asset class was the New York Stock Exchange accounting for 17% of the total. In order for an asset class to be a good candidate for speculation, it has to have room to run. Gold, rare coins, fine art, all represent tiny portions of the economy. Hence, they have plenty of room to exhibit prolonged rises and falls to attract and satisfy speculators. Residential real estate, by contrast, is already so huge, it is not really realistic for one to expect housing prices to exhibit very high sustained growth. The capital required to power sustained growth in the housing market would become so huge, it would crowd out investment required to maintain the basic functioning of the rest of the economy, hence leading to a self-fulfilling cycle where speculation in housing starves capital investment in the rest of the economy, thus dragging down economic growth as a whole and residential housing prices along with it. Residential real estate has exhibited a prolonged multi-decade run-up, obviously. However, compare this to the run-up in gold, which rose from $280 per ounce in the year 2000 to over $2,000 in the year 2024. This represents a satisfying 614% increase. Gold's ability to exhibit these incredibly wide price swings is part of its appeal to speculators. If housing exhibited gold-type swings in pricing of several hundred percent, it could end up accounting for 80% or more of total investable assets in the U.S. Does this sound sustainable? Where would money be found to fund government debt and the stock market? So to take a step back, we have long-term data which seems to indicate housing prices tend to produce a 0% real return over very long periods of time. And we have some economic arguments which may or may not explain this statistical behavior. A necessary question one must ask as an investor is did something fundamental change since 1990 about how housing is priced to justify its recent behavior? Did something change in how houses are taxed? Did something change fundamentally about housing supply or demand? If you cannot point to a substantive fundamental change in the housing market to justify a paradigm shift in pricing, this may indicate housing is vulnerable to a classic regression to the mean repricing to zero episode. But if nothing fundamental has changed to justify these higher housing prices, what can explain recent price increases? The most obvious answer is there may be a speculative bubble occurring in the U.S. housing market. Human psychology is susceptible to bubble investing. Over the centuries, different investment markets have experienced said bubbles. Dutch tulips, railroad stocks, companies centered around the East India trade, etc. The argument of some now is that this is just housing's turn to experience a bubble. Residential real estate is susceptible to bubble investing ironically because there is a common belief that homes are guaranteed to be safe and historically immune from bubbles. The logic being that homes are real, tangible assets so you are safe. To anyone that feels that way, may I please introduce you to Japan. Over 30 years after the bubble burst in Japan and residential real estate prices, the market still has not recovered. If there is currently a bubble in the U.S. housing market, it could last for another year or for another couple decades. As Warren Buffett says, in the short run, the market is a voting machine, but in the long run, it is a weighing machine. This video was sponsored by Stream.com. Stream is the world's best shopping list app. Stream believes life should be simple. Stream's shopping list app features a simple design and it's super easy to share a shopping list with friends, family, and coworkers. Try stream.com today. That's S T R I I I M.com. Thanks for watching. Please like, comment, and subscribe.